My 16-year-old son just completed his high school personal finance class. He enjoyed it and did fine, and I think in general they covered sensible topics like budgeting, how to manage your credit and debt, and key principles to observe when selecting a career and making money. But what I realized was that the entire course was focused on teaching you how not to screw up your personal finances. They were giving you a blueprint for mediocrity. Now there's nothing wrong with that if you're content with staying with the pack. But I know my viewers want more, so here are three personal finance tips that school doesn't teach you. On budgeting. In school, you may have learned the importance of budgeting and how to create one. Now while it's important to manage your day-to-day -day expenses and bills, what you probably didn't learn was that even the most perfectly crafted budgets are most likely going to fail. That's because we're human beings and it's really difficult to follow the strict parameters needed to faithfully follow a budget. Life happens. We are tempted by impulse purchases, we lose track of how much we've spent, and we get busy, stressed, or overwhelmed such that we ignore our budget. So how do you solve for this? The only strategy that I have found that actually works is paying yourself first. The concept is simple. When you get your paycheck, you direct a portion of that money into a separate savings or retirement account. This should happen automatically via direct deposit if possible. That way, you never even see the money and are therefore never tempted to spend it. You learn to live with the money that's left over and get used to that amount. You just have to make sure that you don't run out of money before the next paycheck. It's something you have to do regardless of what type of budget you have, so nothing new there. And the best part is that you will always have something left over each month that's 100% yours. That's not only immensely gratifying, but it sets you on the path to financial security and success. Let's turn to credit and debt. In school, they teach you about using credit responsibly and staying out of debt. All that is great. You don't want to be drowning in debt because you abused credit cards to buy a bunch of useless stuff. But they ignore the power that credit and debt can provide when used properly. This is called leverage, and it's a little-known strategy that wealthy people use to magnify their wealth. A simple example is using a mortgage to buy rental properties. In its simplest terms, you can buy a $100,000 house for only $15,000 to $20,000 down, but still get the full rental payments that a $100,000 house can generate. If you do this right, you can generate returns in excess of 20%, and you get to own a relatively stable asset that tends to increase in value over the long term. This is just one example of how rich people use leverage to juice their returns. If you want to learn more, check out my video on the topic below. Finally, let's tackle careers and income. Schools lay out this basic strategy. Get a decent education, find something you're good at and that you enjoy, and work in that field until it's time to retire. The problem with this strategy is that it does not take into account whether that field is well suited for making money. If making money is your goal, you want to choose a career where the average person in that industry makes a high income and where the top performers make extraordinarily high income. Both are important. First, you want a high average income for the industry because even if you're mediocre at your job, you still have the potential to make good money. Not everyone's going to be a superstar. It's just math. That being the case, why not stack the deck in your favor by working in a field where even if you're just okay, you can still bring in a ton of money. Fields like law, engineering, and medicine all fit the bill here. You also want your money to grow as you advance in your career. This is one of the reasons why I would probably choose to be an investment banker over a pharmacist. If you climb the ranks in investment banking, you can make hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars per year. In contrast, your salary as a pharmacist is going to be capped and you rarely find a pharmacist that makes more than $150,000 to $200,000 per year. While certainly respectable, it's not going to give you the same money-making potential as you advance in your career. But if you really want to make money, you need to start your own business. 
I recently met an elderly woman from Jordan who was a pharmacist by trade but started a vitamin company. It's now an international enterprise worth tens of millions of dollars. What a fantastic example of someone who could have enjoyed a nice, steady salary, but instead used her intelligence, skills, and determination to create something even more amazing instead. So there you have it. Three personal finance tips that they don't teach in school and how you can use them to break away from mediocrity and catapult yourself to incredible financial success. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps a ton and I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.